If there's one thing consistent about Glambia each year, it's that the Global Nutrition Group always makes at least one acquisition. I'll get to that introductory statement a bit later in this content, but on November 1st of 2023, Glambia updated the public markets by releasing its 2023 third quarter earnings report. I'll be utilizing that financial information along with the notes I took while listening to the earnings conference call and any relevant publicly disclosed information to obviously update you on the recent performance of Glambia and specifically Glambia Performance Nutrition but also utilize everything to provide insights about the global sports and active nutrition markets. Just some like quick financial mumbo jumbo housekeeping for us Americans. These numbers you'll hear throughout the content will be year to date results for 2023. So nine months, not three. You'll also be hearing numbers in growth percentages and not revenue numbers because Glambia is not an American corporation and has different reporting standards for their public markets. Finally, the comparative percentages will be on a constant currency basis, which just means the currency fluctuations of the multinational company is stripped out for the ease of comparisons. Okay, enough with those formalities. Let's start with a quick update on that financial data. Total wholly owned revenues were down 9.2% year over year. This was comprised of pricing being down 5.9% and volume being down 2.5%. Glambia also had additional negative 0.7% impact from disposal of assets during the comparative period. For those that might not be familiar, Glambia is made up of two wholly owned divisions. Let's cover Glambia Nutritionals quickly first because I don't particularly spend too much of my time personally on that division, even though it is extremely important to the overall business. Glambia Nutritionals is made up of two subdivisions, the U.S. cheese side and nutritional solutions. Revenue was down 13.9% year-over-year, coming from 11.9% pricing decline and volume decrease of 1.1%. This division was negatively affected by the disposal of assets in the comparatives of 0.9%. Since most of that divisional revenue comes from the U.S. cheese side, the pricing decline year over year in dairy commodity markets greatly impacted results. That being said, it's the nutritional solutions business, which has higher margins and stronger alignment within the value add, better nutrition focus of Glambia right now. Additionally, and I apologize for leaving you on a bit of a cliffhanger in that introductory statement, but yes, Glambia acquired a company. Unfortunately, it wasn't a finished good brand, I guess technically. Within this earnings release, Glambia noted they paid $46 million for a B2B ingredients business, Pantherix. For those unfamiliar with the name, I might have butchered it anyways, the company focuses on refined colostrum for usage in dietary supplements, functional food and beverages, early life nutrition, and then animal health. Beyond the ingredients, Pantherix, also has a multi-format contract manufacturing segment and markets a trio of consumer finished goods brands, with the largest being True Biotics. My assumption is these supplement brands account for very little in revenue, so leadership might just decide to discontinue operating them and focus on the core ingredient manufacturing business that is complementary to the Nutritional Solutions subdivision. Now, moving on to Glambia Performance Nutrition, which is made up of nutritional brands like Optum Nutrition and SlimFast, among a handful of others, this division had revenue that increased 2.7% year over year, but that was another sequential slowdown from the earlier quarters in 2023. The brand portfolio continued to have strong pricing power in the market, with it being up 8.9%, but volume was down 6.2%. Let's look at the GPN revenue by region, starting with the Americas, that currently makes up about two-thirds of the total divisional revenue. In the first nine months of 2023, the Americas' geographical revenue was down 1.8%, which means Q3 was down sequentially. Shifting into the GPN international region, which makes up the remaining one-third or so of the total divisional revenue in the first nine months of 2023, the international markets, which also includes international direct-to-consumer, grew revenue by 12.3% year-over-year. This was sequentially up from last quarter. As GPN continued to have strong pricing power across all products and regions, volume trends in key regional markets continue to be positive for GPN's flagship global brand, Optum Nutrition. 
Now let's shift into a quick product category breakdown. And since we just mentioned optimal nutrition, how about we start within the performance nutrition category first? Yes, they still own the once powerful Big Red Machine, aka BSN, but Glambia seems content with letting that brand kind of slowly die off and lower the cannibalization risk for optimal nutrition. Performance Nutrition now makes up 61% of the total GPN revenue. It had 14.5% year-over-year growth coming from both pricing and volume gains. And then the U.S. market retail consumption growth in the track channels was 9.5% over the 12-week period ending September 10th of 2023. Optum Nutrition has benefited from its leading market position, ongoing marketing investments that includes the More of You in You campaign, expanded distribution, and the protein powder format value proposition continues to resonate with consumers, especially in large retail channels. That also helped Isopure drive distribution and volume growth, which is kind of a good transition into the next biggest GPN product category, which is healthy lifestyle and is made up of brands like Isopure, Think, and Amazing Grass. Healthy lifestyle makes up about 18% of the total GPN revenue, it's been particularly strong over the last several years with the first nine months of 2023 showing revenue growth of 7.2% year over year and an even more impressively US market retail consumption growth in track channels was 12.3% over the 12 week period ending September 10th of 2023. And lastly, of the GPN product categories, weight management has been a drag on the portfolio and honestly an entire supplement industry throughout the last kind of three years with its recent poor performance. And that's kind of putting it in a nice way. SlimFast is only 10% of the total GPN revenue. And in the first nine months of 2023, SlimFast saw a dreadful 33.9% year over year decline in revenue and US market retail consumption decline that was even worse at negative 35.8%. And then for this last part of the content, I'm going to do what I did in kind of previous quarters and just kind of share a collection of hot takes or things I'm left pondering about Glambia at this current time. And since we're on the topic of SlimFast, and the recent earnings commentary I shared from the Atkins nutritional owner, Simply Good Foods Company earlier this week is kind of still fresh in my mind. Let's talk about where that legacy brand sits inside of an evolving weight management category. SlimFast already went through a recent brand refresh, and that was supported by new pack design, creative content, and product innovation. Currently, it doesn't seem to be resonating with the market and U.S. retailers are reducing shelf space of the brand and just kind of the weight management category overall. These new kind of weight loss drugs are providing a customer experience that's closer to the mythical image of a magic pill. That's an issue for every weight management brand and they must navigate the reality that though these drugs have low penetration now within America, that could change quickly in the near term future. And I want to make this very apparent. If we're talking about the two solutions from Novo Nordisk or the other from Eli Lilly. These weight loss shots have extremely high growth rates of prescriptions written that already account for billions in annual revenue. So what can SlimFast do against the backdrop of the FDA approval of more and more pharmaceutical weight loss solutions? They need to streamline everything about the brand from its offerings to its communication strategy. The only way to survive is through cutting all of the fat, no pun intended, and focus on the core meal replacement platform. SlimFast must be viewed by consumers as a friend of these weight loss drugs, not a foe. Speaking about like protein shakes, let's talk about optimal nutrition. I know the focus has been on the growth of the protein powders across large retail channels, but I think the quickest way for the performance nutrition brand to go from just over $1 billion in annual revenue to $2 billion is through perfecting a protein RTD offering that resonates with consumers and investing heavily into a beverage team that has the autonomy to act swiftly and aggressively in the market. There is absolutely no kind of fucking reason why Optum Nutrition shouldn't have a protein RTD offering that's competing with Premier Protein, Fairlife, for Core Power, and Muscle Milk. And then finally, sticking with Optum Nutrition in the beverage category, let's talk about energy drinks. It's time to throw in the towel on the Amino Energy RTDs. The packaging refresh will not materially help results, and regardless of myself thinking some of the liquid is actually pretty good, it will get lost in the energy drinks market because convenience channel or heck any 
just general mainstream consumers don't know what an amino is and they will just kind of move on to another competitor. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a better name, but I'd almost rather them call it optimum energy or gold standard energy. Okay, but rant over and I'm sorry, I'm not really sure why GPN always seems to get these passionate thoughts out of me. But I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also help me get to my new short-term goal of 3,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.